And for our final download this week, yes, it's a very busy download section. We've got something that literally just was announced today, the day we're recording this, August 12th. It's something that we've actually speculated for a while, and I think SP and I finally actually guessed something right for once in our lives. Right, SP? Yeah, and that is Blab is Dead. <laughs> Blab was a great streaming service. It had video components to it. You could have up to four people on your Blab. It was meant for hanging out. You could use it for streaming, for broadcasting. And that's what we did on the Gunna Geek Network. We used it for streaming and broadcasting. And it was also simultaneous chat. You could bring anybody in from the chat into your Blab. It was great. It had difficulty keeping up with the demand. So it's based on the web RTC. If you want to get technical, <laughs> it's based on the web RTC technology, and it has its limitations. It can't really handle extremely large loads. And with all of the improvements that us podcasters and broadcasters, streamers, were asking them to do, they were spending an awful lot of time making improvements to it. And then that absolutely stopped at the end of May 2016. Yeah, And everybody was like, what the heck's going on? So finally, they fessed up in a late day, Friday afternoon, town <laughs> hall announcement meeting, whatever it was, and said, hey, look, we are not going to be putting any more development time into this. We're going to focus on our new app, which is called Bebo. Bebo, and that's right. I forgot the name of it. Yes. It, well, everybody does because nobody's heard of it and nobody cares about it because you have FaceTime, you have <laughs> Skype, you have all the other great things that people can use, FaceTime, whatever. And uh, yeah, I just I don't see it being hanging out now. Wish them a lot of luck. I really do. But uh, because what they had here was something that was nowhere else because Google Hangouts on air might have been more stable but it didn't have the instantaneous broadcast no. and chat and ability to bring anybody in. And so eh, the one thing that Google Hangouts on air had over it is you could have more people on yeah. it. So that was good. But yeah, Blab is dead. And literally, if you had content on there before, you can't get to it. You can't download it. Even if you have the emails with the links, the servers have been shut down. And it is gone. And we all knew it was going to happen. And I just thankfully in the past two weeks, I got my two shows that had been streaming using Blab on a different streaming service, which we'll talk about later <laughs> after we've had a little bit more time to experiment with it, because I don't want to say I don't want to recommend anything yet until we've had a chance to look at some options because there are a few options out there none as really as good as blab but there's one that's leading the pack right now it's a little tease for later uh <laughs> steven you didn't use blab for any of your shows we did one live show on yeah. better podcasting on blab but what did you think about the service yeah no i i, I did a have a fun little configuration with that live episode that we did. I, I had it so I was switching like I normally do, but also integrating Blab. So it was actually a pretty, pretty fun thing to figure out. But uh, for me, the reason I never actually went with Blab from the beginning was uh, two main reasons. Number one is it was a square resolution. And, and for me, I'm a big widescreen, even though it's not technically 16 by nine that you see on here because of the cropping, it's, it's slightly less, but uh, I still really like the widescreen format better. I think that it's easier if you're viewing things afterwards on on a modern monitor or a TV. But I always, you know, I was a bit of a Blab advocate, even though I wasn't a Blab user. Like, I remember in the early days, you and I got in some heated discussions about Blab and and, you know, some things that you said ended up being absolutely true. Some things that I said end up being true. And I think there was a, a little bit of uh of enlightening on both sides of things and what i really thought they did solid was the user integration like if you look there's a show that some of us podcasters do watch it's on saturday mornings called ask the podcast coach and it's a show that is largely around bringing people in and when i first started seeing that show it was mostly done by phone telephone 
uh, call-ins and other w different routes to get people in. And Blab changed the dynamic of that because it was just a matter of people watching the show and clicking call. And, and then they were in and they were video chatting. And there's a lot of things like that that they did really well. If you look at Hangouts on Air, that's it, it's completely different. You have to provide people with an invite or a link. It's not the same. There's a 30 second delay. Blab did a really good job with that live integration. And if you look at the site right now, it's simple. All it says is time to say goodbye. As of today, we're shutting down the Blab beta experiment and focusing 100% on our new project. For the full story, please read the message below. And when you go to that message, you'll see that the long story short is that there was the two factions of Blab users, the people like SP and myself and the rest of the network where we were using it for broadcasty type stuff. And then there was the people who were using it, funny enough, just to hang out. And they, uh, Blab says that actually the Hangout user base was much larger than the other, and it's less demanding. It's actually easier for them to work on. So they're going to be retooling is what they say to go to that sort of Hangout structure. And, and we mentioned it, they said a while ago they weren't really going to care about the broadcaster anymore. And this is what they say they're doing is shutting it down so that they can retool for that. So if you were a podcaster using Blab, uh, First off, my apologies, because I know we talked about it and, you know, take a time travel back and kick Steven and SP on the butt for that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think we did also say at, at this time it's it's a service. So I, I think we covered our base mostly. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, you, you know, it was a gateway drug for me personally to video cast, vidcast, what, whatever you want to call it, stream broadcast. And I had used Hangouts on Air previously, but it was audio only with an overlay of my podcast. And, and that was it. That was the YouTube. We didn't do video. Blab let my shows enter into the video realm with doing, and I'll admit it, minimal video editing. I had some things going on. I had a modem that was probably bad from the beginning of when I started video streaming. I have limited graphic, as we talked about already, graphic uh, experience and ability to manipulate graphics. I did not know how to use OBS Studio before. And Blab was the reason that got me into that. And I will say, you didn't have to use Blab to do that. You can start off broadcasting through Google Hangouts on Air or some of the other services that are available today, or even the way we do this show through multiple Skype accounts. It's not, it's actually not that hard now that I'm doing it. And if you have a, any questions, please ask us. We'll let you know what we found out. We are actually running down some questions on a couple of audience members right now for better podcasting. And that's great. So, but the gateway drug was there. It got us into uh, the easier version of video streaming. And I think that there are a lot, if you need to know the different ones that we're exploring right now on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Starling Tribune, just hit me up. I'm not prepared to talk to, about them quite yet on better podcasting because we'll see about their longevity over time. It, most of them are using the WebRTC architecture and if they're having the same difficulties as Blab is, you know, it just might not be something that's working, but it, it was an amazing gateway into the technology of real time chat and video streaming with multiple hosts. So I think now that that door is open, now that the possibility is open, I think there's some monetization that can happen and really sustain these services, even at a minimal level going forward. So I'm looking forward to what the future has. And as for Blab, you know, it was about a year from rise yeah. to fall. And if that, if that's how long it takes systems to rise and fall in this day and age, you really <laughs> got to stay in tune with what is in development and what people are using because it could come and go before you realize it's there for sure and if you go to geeks.link slash buy blab like b-y-e uh I've, I've written an article on the gonna geek site and in there you can link through to the big long post that 
the owner of Blob did create. And there's a, a, a sort of a, a highlight and to a degree low light reel. Uh, there's some some mixed feedback that even he provides. And uh, I encourage you to check that out. I think that it's, it's worth kind of seeing what could be accomplished in, in such a short time. And, you know, if you look at a lot of projects, a lot of things do start this way. You know, they, they start, they have a, a little go and then they die, and then somebody else takes the idea, or even the same company takes the idea and makes it even bigger, or like I said, someone else might do it, and and if you look at sort of history, even Hangouts on Air started completely different. I think I think that this was a, a good experiment over the year, and definitely opened the doors for some other people to maybe do a better job, and maybe tailor it towards the broadcaster, because again, Blab decided against it, and I'm sure at some point they decided that very consciously, and that's probably when you started to see some of the issues just just remain. And if that's the route they want to go, that's the route they want to go. That's their business uh, t to decision to be made. And in any case, I was not a Blab user, but in my post, I I do thank Blab. I think that there is a lot of people on the network who really did get that taste of video because of Blab, and they wouldn't have otherwise. So I, I do sincerely thank Blab for everything that they did offer, Ed. I'm looking forward to see where the rest of you podcasters go. For me, until Skype dies I'm or something changes, I'm quite comfortable with what I'm doing right now. Yeah, and I'll be exploring that in the future myself. So it's it's something that it was great and I appreciate the opportunity and I'm look forward looking forward to what's next. For sure. And please do chime in. Tell us what your experience was with Blab or, or, you know, maybe you didn't use Blab. Maybe you're looking at some other things. Please do absolutely let us know. You can tweet us at BetterPod. Find us at Facebook.com slash BetterPodcasting and email podcast at BetterPodcasting.com.